Uh, hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Now being recorded from my new apartment. I don't want to... This might be a weird thing to think about. I don't want to feel like an asshole when I say... Like, new apartment. Uh, Bruma. Current quests. Am I in the right place? I don't want to sound like an asshole when I'm like, my new apartment, because I feel like some people are, like, going to be a dick about it. Not like some people are going to be dicks to me, but, like, I know that there are people who are, like, flexing their new apartment. But, like, man, I just live here, you know? You? I've been better. Heard any news from the other provinces? Nothing I'd like to talk about. Take care. Have pity, sir. I got nothing to eat. That's a shame. Um. All right. I was definitely doing something here. Sorry. It's been like a full month and day since I've recorded this. Uh, this is the thing about recording stuff in advance, and this is part of why I like Let's Plays versus streams more. Because, like, with a Let's Play, it's like, this is left where it is. What is it? It goes where it is meant to go. Is it this one? You know, the Let's Play will, will show up, and it'll be like it is. <laughs> uh, and it just exists in one place, you know? Um, whereas a stream is, like, impermanent and it happens on the day. And, like, I know that you can watch VODs, but they don't feel as, like, authentic as watching the stream. But a Let's Play is made to go in advance, you know? And that's what I like. You load them up beforehand. Hello. Wow. Very friendly. Um... Kicking stuff over. Never gets old. Oop. Nope, I'm not a criminal. These are locked with easy locks, dude. Ha! The hell. Alright, let's do some Elder Scrolls. Regulus Terentius, Count Breville. I'm really rather busy, and I doubt that you have anything to say that I need to hear. Mm hmm I wish I could help. I understand the need to help defend the heir to the throne. It is a, a duty we all share. But with an Oblivion Gate threatening Breville, I need all my soldiers here. Hmm. He thinks to use his position as head of the... Major's guild members have. I won't risk my guard attacking the okay. infernal oblivion gate. We'll hold the walls and hope for the best. Bye. <laughs> Bye, huh? That it? I should close the gate outside Breville. Okay. Loud and clear. That I can do. As, uh, as fun as this game is, I, I am feeling a bit of, of nostalgia and like, I don't know, I'm, I'm lacking um, some of the stuff that I had in, uh, in Morrowind, you know? Well met. The thing is, is that I kind of admit that like Skyrim also lacks the thing that, the things that Morrowind likes, but... Skyrim has enough cool in it going on. I feel like there's so much that has been almost like, oh, well, there's your problem. I feel like there's been so much taken out of this, you know? I've, I've complained about this in the past. I'm sure I have. Um, and I'm also sh certain I'm not the first, last, or millionth person to say this. But in the lore, um... Atronox, huh? I don't give no shits about Flame Atronox. 
Fire's like my favorite thing. I'm a dark elf. Um. Yeah, at one point in the lore, this was a jungle, and we have seen, you know, high fantasy European style, you know, forest and plains and hills stuff. And, you know, this may as well, this could be just a, like, uh, how do I put this? This could be a, there you go. This could be a Lord of the Rings game if you didn't see anything specifically Skyrim related in it, you know? Like somebody just walking around might believe that it's just meant to be a Lord of the Rings. Or another generic thing that rips off Lord of the Rings. And like, Elder Scrolls is, is notorious for not ripping off Lord of the Rings. In fact, invented its own thing. Like, Daggerfall is kind of a rip of, of Lort. Oh, for those not, uh, for those not classic with the channel, um, Lort is my intentional mispronunciation of L-O-T-R. You can't pronounce L-O-T-R besides saying Lotor. And, like, that's fine, but it also evokes Voltron. Maybe that's not what we want to do. Not after last time. Um, but Lort you know, originates from a somebody just doing a typo and spelling L-O-T-R incorrectly. You know, it's that sort of thing. What are these for? Nothing, huh? All right, let's go in. Let's heal up and then go in, I should say. Yeah, I love seeing my restoration go up. Um, yeah, I find myself like pining. I think that's the term I'm looking for. I'm like almost pining for uh, some of the other Elder Scrolls. Is Like, of course, Morrowind has the coolest world, in my opinion. What do you mean it doesn't have enough charge? Oh, right, I'm still using this thing. Don't mind me. But yeah, and then, like, they also have them wearing, like, more traditional like fantasy garb instead of the more Roman stuff that they have in every other game. Because obviously the Empire is based off the Roman Empire. And you know, that might be cool to see like, you know, fantasy Romans. What's up with this? I guess that's probably painful for some people. Luckily, I'm a dark elf. All right. Hello. <clears throat> I feel like as I'm getting more, I guess I can turn the difficulty up. But as I'm getting more and more power, oh, it's that thing, right? Does this hurt? Ah. Amazingly, I guess it hurts a lot. That's fine. Oh, I want to head people off. Um, I am, I've been taking a break from Castlevania this this uh, month 
just because like it's a good game and I'm having a lot of fun, but it takes a lot out of me to record because it's so high focus. <laughs> Because, you know, it's it's a thing where, like, you just need to be so on point with your dodges and parries and blocks and things. Um, and instead, I'm going to play Hylix. Um, I'm also going to focus on trying to beat Valkyria Chronicles. And in the same way, and for the same reason, um, this is the end of uh, August we're now at, but... The point is, I'm going to take a break on Elder Scrolls after September in October. <coughs> So, you will have another few episodes of Elder Scrolls for the next little bit. For those of you who are watching this as it's coming out. But again, the nature of LPs allows you to like just go back and watch them as, as if they, they are new now. And that's fun. That's part of why I like LPs, you know? I Maybe this is a weird character trait. But I actually like to go back and watch old LPs again that I'm, like, nostalgic for. I don't even know if people can get nostalgic for LPs. Is that something with my, like... Is that supposed to look like that? Is that a glitch on my part, or what? Um, I'm not... I'm running this game on original... On its relatively original specs. Um, and the problem with that is... This game is now so old that it can't recognize my computer, and it's running on slightly lower settings than it could be. But you know what? I kind of like that. It's probably a lot of people who are doing really high-def, super HD, beautiful LPs of, of uh, Oblivion this year, you know? Only at this channel do you get the unfiltered crap. The authentic, ah. classic crap. Oof. Is it oh. this? Oh. Mm. All right. I love getting fire salts, man. The, the way that they attempt to balance the later games sometimes makes them a little less fun. And it also, like, blows my mind that you can go back and do these things in the, in the older games, you know? Like, um, I think you can soul trap your, your summoned creatures in Morrowind. Um, I have never played with too much magic, and, like... That concept is, like, crazy to me. The idea that, like, you can make something and then trap that soul. Because I... Started with uh, with Skyrim, and the idea that like you can make a self like regulating economy and just make more gems and just buy more gems and then make more things and have an infinite loop going on like wow that's crazy. Ah. Conceptually, the idea that um like that's possible is just super weird. Okay. Nothing. Crap, I was probably supposed to ride that up. Does this reset it? Nope. Recently watching a podcast clip um, from Castle Super Beast podcast about the Outer Worlds. I find that game rather infuriating for a couple of reasons. One, it came out like right alongside the Outer World. The Outer Worlds and the Outer Wilds came out like right next to each other. Hmm. Let's do more of this tower. Like, in timeline, they are so close to each other in terms of release and development. 
And I, th I think the DLCs came out, like, within a month of each other. And, like, dude, that's frustrating. Oh, cool. I've opened a gate. Just, you know, it's probably not anyone's fault, but the Outer Worlds and the Outer Wilds are such similar names. Especially when you have to translate that into other, like, languages. Oh, there he goes. Like, I think in Japanese, that's like, Warudo and Wairudo. Yeah, I think so. And like that's got to be frustrating for people. Like it it is annoying enough of a of a of a language similarity for me who speaks English. English, not English. Pardon me. Anguish is close, but for me who speaks English, um, like semi-natively, like that's annoying enough. But then also like bring that to other countries. That's got to be frustrating for them, you know. How's that sound look? It looks all right. Make it a little quieter. All right. Um, it also, this is, a, this is a thing with the writing of the Outer Worlds where, like, it's an attempt to be, like, a Bioware game because it's, obli uh, it's Obsidian. And, you know, Obsidian now has all the people who did all the old Fallout games and all the people who did the old Bioware games, like, working there. That guy's for dish. That guy's for sure dead. You kind of, you kind of don't really walk off a, a dance with lava. Okay, let's hit this big tower then. Um So there's a this is a thing that frustrates me with the outer worlds where like you get to this planet and it's like capitalism reigns here and it's hell and it's really bad and unfun and like when you're being evil and villainous in, like, some games, like, in KOTOR, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, um, like, you could be mustache-twirlingly evil, and it's fun. <clears throat> like, being that villainous, being that much of an asshole, like, that's fun. It's enjoyable. <clears throat> um, to an extent in a lot of other games, also the case. Oh, it's so dark, I didn't see this guy. And there are even there are even planets in Kotor that are like this is the unfun, like evil capitalism planet. Where has my sword gone? Ah, it's busted. That makes sense. It's unfortunate, but it makes sense. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to say two points here. Um, being evil in... Like, most games is kind of fun, and there's a, there's a, a degree of enjoyability to it. Like, oh, I'm thinking of a game, it's not prototype, but it came out, like, the same year, and you also play as a... Infamous. Infamous being, like, villainous in that game, that's fun. It's enjoyable. I like it. It's wacky and it's goofy. Um, and, like, you know, having a nice, fun, black-and-white morality system to choose between, that's fun, you know? Ah. Like, sometimes in, uh, like, Mass Effect, you being an asshole is, like, you are a, repu like, disreputable piece of shit. And, like, no one could ever, like, justify acting like that in a lot of cases. They just do it because they're greedy and they want to. Uh, let's, uh, let's put more poisons on you, huh? Wait, what have I done? <laughs> Ah, uh, that stamina running out kind of wore him down, I think. Um, but anyway, in, like, outer, in outer worlds. Nice. With one pick to spare. You being an, you being a villain is you being, like, a capitalist bootlicker. Um, and, like... Sometimes you can't even get yours out of it. And that makes it less fun, you know? Like, doing evil stuff where you have to, like, deal with other people and you have to do as they say, that's less fun. It is fun when you're doing evil stuff and it's like... You are the one putting in the effort to be evil. And I feel like that's really the core of a lot of evil decisions in, in video game writing, you know? Stuff where, like, you didn't have to be a dick. And, and that's part of the problem with, like, um, some of the, like, evil choices in uh, Outer Worlds. Uh, it was a bit of a problem in New Vegas as well. Because, like, with New Vegas, there's also the uncomfortable real-world context of, like... Hey, you can side with fascists in this games, or you can side with people who are like, you know, trying to resurrect America and, you know, with everything that that brings with it, you know? Um. Hmm. Kind of looking for light. I think I had it. Yes, I did. Oh, ah. I'm being closed in on. Um, yeah, and, like, being evil in, like, Fallout New Vegas, like, sometimes you have a bit of, like, you're just following orders, and, like, that's also kind of less fun. It has a bit of uncomfortable real-world context to it. It has, like, you know, and theoretically that's supposed to be what makes up, like, ooh, you know, good morally gray choices, but, like, sometimes that's just not why I play video games, you know? Oh, huh. All right, let's take a look at my rangs. Unsay, amulet, resist magic. We can do one of those. Oh, this is busted. Let's put on that then, huh? Do I have anything that can fix stuff? I don't think that I really do. I can fix these, but I can't fix any of these. 
Yeah, well. It'll probably be in my future to pay for um, training. Um, so yeah, that's just like a complaint that I have about Outer Worlds. Where like sometimes I, I just can't stand the fact that I'm being evil in this style. That's lame and it's less fun, you know? And like, people are like, oh, it's morally gray. It's a more intelligent game that makes you think. And I'm like, do I need to be thinking right now? Did I tell you I wanted to think? You know? Just one of those things. All right. We're mobile. And then another thing about the Outer Worlds is uh, every planet is the capitalist, capitalism sucks planet. And, like, I'm not even, I don't want to say anything like capitalism is good or, you know, there should be a capitalism is good planet or anything like that. That's not at all what I want. But what I, what I mean by this is when every planet has the same theme about how, like, oh, everything sucks here and the people are dying and they wish that they were dead and they can't do anything to escape the situation because capitalism, like... Again, not really why I play video games. There's almost no escapism to be found in it. Of course, there's a strong political protest message and other stuff like that, but, you know, you kind of really lose out on, on a lot of, um, like, fun, shall we say? Yeah, I was really in the mood to play a new, like, Elder Scrolls-style game. Okay, cool. Uh, but one that was not set in the past. And also, this was actually so long ago that I was still planning my Oblivion playthrough. I had not done it yet. I think I came out of this one. So we keep going up. I don't know what cat lift means. But anyway, my choices were Cyberpunk 2077 on PS4 or The Outer Worlds. And like, God, can you blame me for my choice? Yeah, just like, I got to like the third planet or space station or whatever, and I was like, this is also a corporation bad planet. I, I get it, you know? Like... I'm aware that they're not good and that they're bad, in fact, but, like, I also, the, the game has told me nothing but this, and, and I, I get it. It's not even that I don't agree. I do agree. But, like, this is all that has been said to me. Am I meant to be forming an opinion? Like, and, like, I was wondering, like, is this game even meant for me? Because maybe this game is meant for, like, somebody who's not in it on, like, the shenanigans in corporate America or something. But, like, then again, you know, this is a Obsidian game made after, uh, made after Fallout New Vegas. And in the trailer for Outer Worlds, they advertise, hey, we made Fallout New Vegas, remember that? I like having these things with me, but like, I guess I can jump, drop one of these. Oh, it's so small though. Hardly any point. 
these have weight? Jesus. I don't even have a bow. I was used to Skyrim where they're weightless. But yeah, like, is this for people who are uh, uh, not up to date on your on your capitalism lore and about how like people are suffering and dying under shitty bosses? Because because if they don't know, but then they're also like people who are getting into the outer world. Like, you think they might? I don't know. Like, because I remember seeing people really like the game. Uh when it first came out and they were like, yeah, you don't need Bethesda to do this. You know, when uh, Obsidian made New Vegas and it was great because they had Bethesda's money. And now they don't even need Bethesda's money. They can do it on their own. They got Kickstarter, you know? All right, you were being a problem, dude. Well, I guess that clan fear went away. Because I killed him. Okay, and then to the lust keep, I guess. I feel like I might have been in there. Or maybe not. What? Was there a man? Okay, let's start poisoning them. Anyway, the reason that I was thinking of all of this... ...is because, um, I noticed that, like... What exactly did I... Did I pick something up? Hmm... I feel like I must have picked up something of theirs. Because I'm really heavy now. I guess they might have cursed me again, but I thought that it dropped your strength, not that it put... I guess it could be a different thing that encumbers you. Anyway, I was just thinking about how, like... Okay. Okay. About how, like, Bethesda was, like, tracking stuff. Uh, weight of guilt. I was thinking about how, um... Burden. Well, yeah. Very heavy for me, unfortunately. When I left that one room and then I came back and, and the thing still hadn't, like, dropped back down because it didn't reset, I was thinking about how Bethesda will track things that... Or like the player isn't looking at and about how like every object and every corpse will have physics like this corpse actually has physics and I think it's V no hold E no Z yeah there we go we can actually drag this corpse around and that's a fun mechanic that you can do I guess but there's no reason to do it um there's like I think one part in Skyrim like literally one part in Skyrim has you Yeah, one part in Skyrim need, requires you to drag corpses somewhere, and I, I don't even remember another part where they have you do that. And so, like, that's used, like, exactly once in, you know, the 500-hour game that is Skyrim. And one thing that I did commend the Outer Worlds for is that, like, them not using the Bethesda engine... Burden of agnosticism. Train magic, huh? Them not using the, the, the Bethesda engines and like them using their own thing. Uh, and also like when they, uh, 
you know, swap to a, a real engine, as a matter of fact, because I think they're on Unreal 5 now. Or Unreal 4, maybe. God, I still think that it's supposed to be Unreal 3. I'm so behind Ow. the times. One thing that I like is that it, it works kind of like Bioshock. Where not every single thing has physics. Because not every, you know, thing in the world needs physics. And it annihilates the, the, the load speed of your game and it hurts the load times. And there's a lot of things that are actively made worse by having physics on every single game object. Oblivion's Caress. Ah, what the hell. Still heavy, though. You know what? I'm carrying too many swords as it is. What I really need is to be able to fix and repair all the swords that I do have. Let's go ahead and just take it with us. It's a good sword. All right. Cool, and we're done. Anyway, yeah, I commend them for having, um, you know, no, like, real physics engines in the game. Uh, and, like, you know, even having items that you can put back on the floor in, like, Morrowind, for example, that hurt the load times. But having things just exist as a static item that you can pick up or not, and then they will be, like, and then from that point on, they're just going to be an inventory item and that's it. That's nice and convenient. I feel like more games could learn from that, but, like, anyway. Sorry, I wanted to say, yeah, they should do this like the Outer Worlds, where stuff is being loaded not on, where, where stuff is only loaded on screen, and, like, the game isn't trying to track a billion things across the world. But I also then wanted to complain about the Outer Worlds. Don't mind me. Uh, oh, God, has it been like this the whole time? I thought I fixed that. I really thought I fixed that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I really... I'm just confused now. Well, anyway. I've been Alfred. This has been The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.